Hey guys, FK2D. What is that? FK Tuning Development. Look, I'm just gonna use the abbreviation from now on, but let me see if I can't get the shot from here. So it's my block, Rammy Racing Sleeve. Uh, thank you to the guys at Rammy for totally understanding. Some of you do know, some of you don't know. Um, I have some medical stuff that goes on in my life that definitely, this is probably gonna be my last build for me. I've built other people's cars all my life. And, uh, this is going to be, for me, this is, this is it. The motor build anyway wise, I may go bigger on the turbo, but I'm not going to go spending this amount on another car again. But the topic, Motec versus Honda OEM ECU. Same Honda, but for a reason. And, uh, one quick rant. Um, I don't like doing this, but this is just getting to the point. It's kind of getting crazy. Guys, if you have a tuner and you're running to me, okay, for advice and problems, all right, you cannot get a hold of your tuner, okay, please either switch or just, like, I can't, the repeated emails and stuff, and then when I give you the advice, which was likely the same information your tuner gave you, and then you ignore it, uh, and just go on and on and on, uh, guys, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Uh, it, it's rude. You're taking up my time. I don't go to your work, and tell you to go work for free. This is my work. My information is my work. All right. If I'm giving you that information that is so valuable that I spent 22 years of my life learning, think about it. You spent 22 years of your life. You go to college for four or five years. Do you come out and not work for free? So think about that the next time somebody calls me for a lot. Have a little bit of idea of what I've gone through for this information, what I've done. So, ranking and rating aside, okay? That's aside, all right? And that's where I stand with that. You can take my advice, but if you don't take my advice, I'm just gonna not answer anymore. So, I just, I got too many people, all right, that I need to take care of, that they, that, that, that need my help, and I, that's just wasting their time. So, sorry for that. Let's get out of the way. Motec versus Honda. And I say Honda, not because it's, Honda. I'm going to just say, here's the biggest thing. Everybody has got this number stuck in their head, 600 horsepower. It is the number that they have stuck in their head again and again and again and again and again. The stock ECU can handle more than 600 horsepower. It is not the ECU that is the issue. It is the software that we are using to change the values within the ECU. No, the stock ECU cannot do port injection. Yes, the stock ECU can read external fuel. Well, everybody's gonna say, no, it's not. You're wrong. Yes, it can. How do you think we compensate for flex fuel, guys? We use an engine coolant temperature sensor too to alter the fuel values. Now, Honda has a, an adapter kit that now plugs into the ECT2, and now you can turn around and remove fuel from ethanol. So yes, the OEM ECU can read an external fuel source. The split second controller, for you guys who are running that in the port injection, I do not recall if the split second controller has an external port for saying, sending out a signal, a five volt reference, to say, that X amount of fuel is being put out. I don't believe it's there. So for those guys running port, yes, that may be more difficult. Um, the AEM controller has an out output signal uh, to say that, yes, it's working. So that's what Honda has done. However, this now, for those of you who do or don't know, real quick on, on the side note of this, and just staying on that little topic for a minute, uh, now, how do you run ethanol if you want to run methanol? Well, here's how. You run it through the math sensor. Okay, guys, um, if you really want to be able to run more methanol than 750cc cc without, create, without throwing your whole math scaling out into left field, uh, and to do it the right way, and it's not easy, guys. It takes a lot of work um, to scale the math and could drop the curve accordingly based upon voltage output because now the AEM will read the, will put the output versus 
matte voltage. Uh, that's a way more accurate way because the car is tuned on math. It's not tuned on speed density, which is manifold pressure. The AEM kits are, are boost pressure based most people use. The car is not, that fuel is not targeted on the boost pressure versus RPM. It's targeted 100%, like 90 something percent on that meth sensor reading that it gets the air going over that sensor. So if you guys want to run a lot of methanol, well, that's the way to do it. You have to actually tap into the math sensor signal back to the computer. That's how you do it. So with that aside, uh, port injection. Well, the stock ECU kit doesn't have the drivers. The Motec Motec does. And, uh, but with that being said, you do, however, uh, really need a feed pressure sensor. Now, what is a feed pressure sensor? The low pressure fuel pump in the tank does not have a pressure sensor because it's designed to operate at 70 pounds and the computer, our ECU, only targets the values of that high pressure fuel pump off a 70 pound reference in fuel pressure. So if for some reason the fuel pressure drops off the other end, that can create some issues. Uh, is that why we see the pressure fluctuations in the Extreme DI pump? and the Honda pump when it reaches above 80%, above 6,500 RPM. No, nothing to do with it, guys. Uh, it's all pump control. Uh, the reason I know this is because um, on Motec, uh, I've seen plenty of logs where stock fuel pump all going all the way out to, uh, going all the way out to like 570 uh, with using a whole crap load of port injection, which draws way more fuel. And the high pressure fuel pump did not do this. It was flat. The low pressure, on the other hand, uh, obviously started to suffer because we're dealing with the inability to keep up with the total volume of fuel. Uh, so in, I've got logs where uh, not 2000 cc injectors, it was 1650 cc and no issues, all the way out to where the pump's like practically maxed out. So that's, that's not, a, that's not the issue there. Um, the, the thing is the stock ECU doesn't have a pressure feed reading. So, um, you would have to tap into one of the extra ECU pins and have it programmed to read it. So if that were the case, I mean, the other thing is a lot of people don't understand is that the ECU, and they do this a lot with general, with GM cars, okay, with Chevy cars, we add flex fuel to cars that don't have flex fuel and we don't use an edge coolant temperature sensor plug. We find a certain pin on the ECU and then it's programmed in there. Um, but if you noticed, we did, it did say that we used the engine coolant temperature sensor on the radiator, or so it's a radiator temperature sensor. We use that plug in order to send the signal back to the ECU to adjust fuel. We could do that with any one of those five volt signals. So the ECU, if it has more five volt pins, which it likely does because it's used on more than one car, uh, you're going to be able to do more with it. Um, and like I said, the only thing that's said, as far as I can tell, is that there's no port injector driver, which is the Focus RS, no port injection. And the Civic Type R, no port injection. And there's a couple, uh, I believe Land Rovers, that use the same ECU, no port injection. So that's kind of like the issue there with the, with the, the drivers. Um, let me see. So... The real issue is, honestly, guys, is that we just don't have access to all the software in there. Uh, if we had the ability, okay, to uh, run, sorry, excuse me for a minute, uh, run a larger injector, uh, we could definitely get more out of it. Uh, the other thing is, and a lot of people don't understand, we could get more out of this high-pressure fuel pump if we had a cam upgraded fuel pump load. So uh, what do I mean by this? Well, the can the high pressure pumps driven off the cam. There are people who get more than 650 wheel horsepower worth of fuel or 600 wheel horsepower worth of fuel out of this same style pump. There are other manufacturers, but the thing is a lot of times it's more an issue to deal with the cam load on the end that pumps the fuel pump, uh, the height at which that pump rate happens. So believe me when I tell you, the fuel pump, you guys need to think about this, 
that fuel pump, okay, it's based off the LT1 design, or what I mean. Uh, if you guys do your research, they, they, the LT1, go look at the top of that pump, all right, guys, you're going to see that's the same pump. And what you're going to find is that that pump modified supplies way more than 600. Well, what do I mean? Well, the stock pump on LT4, which is the Camaro ZL1, which is direct injection only, has no problem feeding 650 horsepower to that car and then some. And I believe they've managed to get that pump up to 1,000 horsepower on direct injection only. So, we are not limited on that car because of the actual computer itself we are limited based upon the ability to program it because they haven't opened it up and hacked it or however you want to word it and the limited two parts all right so honda or honda is not limited and even so okay even so i run race gas okay i get Let's say for a reference, everybody knows there's a G3900, or even better yet, I would like an EFR 8474. And yes, it can be put on the car, you just gotta move your radiator support. Um, and it's like a 95 pound a minute turbo. Let's go for 950. Okay, guys, G3900 really is maybe good for 750 wheel. It's not really a 95 pound a minute turbo, it's more like an 80 ish. And the way it just kind of only at a specific boost pressure. Um, the issue is options and the, yes, Honda did, or, did add injector size to their software, but it, it's, again, it's not all the settings in there. It's literally just taking a number in the background and subtracting, uh, a certain amount off of it. Basically, let's just say at, uh, because the injector expects to flows 24% more, 25% more, you're literally just pulling 25% off of there. Problem is, is that when we get into uh, those much smaller time frames in which that is a smaller injector windows, okay, we can't adjust that injector slope. So the injector slope is at every certain pressure, so many bars. So like the middle is usually 100 bar, the top's 200 bar, and the numbers in between zero and 200 bar are all there, and then a set amount of fuel injector size is there we can add and subtract to all those but we can't select a minimum of uh, amperage output meaning there's a minimum amount of power that goes out to that injector we can't change that minimum power in that range and we can't when it gets to those lower pressures or maybe those smaller injector times we can't change those values because under one millisecond all right this is very very common under one millisecond, injectors often don't fuel anywhere near as accurate. So from one millisecond all the way up to seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, uh, whatever the time that it's staying open, um, or usually it's a nice flat line with a nice increase, but below that it can go up, down, and all over the place, all right? This is the problem you run into with big injectors, okay? It gets really hard to control fuel uh, at very low speeds and a lot of adjustments usually need to be done, which we cannot currently do in Motec. Now, there's no theoretical reason, okay, why the Extreme DI 2000cc injectors can't work on Honda. Will it run smoothly? I can't answer that. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys, I've spent considerable amount of money coming out a lot of stuff and at this point, uh, I'm not going at this point. I am not ready to lump over that amount. All right. I am not ready. Oh, I'm not ready to lump over that large amount of money in order to just find out I've got paperweights at this point. Um, you know, I mean, that's a considerable amount of, of, of chunk change there, guys. So, uh, I mean, that kind of just is what it is. You can't really get around that part of that scenario. Um, I do know, I, I do have the option for uh, a 1700cc injector, but I haven't even tried to put them in one. What the hell do I need it for? My, my turbo and what I, the power I have, 
G25 660 really flows 60 pounds a minute, so that's really only 600 horsepower. So what do I really need? I'm going to push that thing to the edge every time? Uh, no. I mean, you can't my motor built, but I don't need to go nuts. Um, you know, it's just better to go to a bigger, more efficient turbo at that point to go beyond that. So until that point comes, I have no reason to test them. So if somebody is interested in giving it a shot, sure, I'll give them to you at close to my cost and we can see where it goes, but that's on you. Um, it's just like if somebody has, wants to try the 2000cc injectors from XDI, uh, if there's a way to make them work, I'll make them work. Um, that's just what it is. Um, you know, it's, if there's a way to make them function correctly on the stock ECU, uh, I'll do it. And, but at this point, you know, software is just, you know, it's, it's not, not really quite there. Now, there are other software options. And whereas Motec, we don't need other software options. It's just Motec, everything is in there. There's bit in it, and that has injector size, but it doesn't have flex fuel. It doesn't have fuel pump control. Um, the only other option, guys, is something called Win OLS. And what that is, is it reads all the code in the ECU. Okay? And you have to figure out what tables are what and go from there that's what you have to figure out at that point and if you don't have the right tables you make the alterations who knows what happens but the same thing goes with the boost control and speed density and the type of tune and how it reads that is all software so literally at the end of the day the issue is the OMECU cannot physically control port injectors that's what the issue is. Now, could we even have, can create a module, an external module, that reads and is controlled by the computer? Yeah, we could. But it's a lot of work, a lot of headache, a lot of programming. Uh, that stuff isn't easy, which is why Motec already has drivers in there. So that's why people go, okay, we're going to go to my Motec or Cyvex even. Um, that Cyvex is a little bit less costly, cost wise. And pretty much does everything that MoTeC does. So, um, and again, we're still nor north of 4,000, I believe, um, for an aftermarket ECU. Uh, so some people are asking, probably asking, well, why the hell don't we just piggyback an AEM V2 into it? Uh, the issue is CAN bus and being able to just eliminate everything that the computer wants to see. Uh, the, all the signals the computer wants to see that it's no longer going to have. Um, it, it's just ABS and all that other stuff. And even the windows, the push button start, the, the R mode, comfort mode, all that stuff. Uh, all that stuff is now digitally communicated. It's not like it used to be where we turn the key and a relay starts the motor. And it just goes from the key to the relay to crank the starter to the motor. Now it goes from the key or the push button to the ECU, then the ECU sends the signal to the relay, then the relay goes to the starter, and then while the computer is cranking, it reads the can and crank signal, all right, and then times how long it's cranking, and then when it's done cranking for so long, it shuts off that signal to the starter, or when the, when the car starts, okay? So you don't have the ability to just go piggyback that stuff. Um... I mean, if you could, man, you're a genius, man. You can, if you can program all that and get it to work, and again, we're going back to you'd have to go to win OLS. You know, you got to defeat the electronic wastegate and all that other stuff. So what would be great, okay, because they did, if I remember correctly, did this on the SI, is the upgraded turbo kit, uh, they had a three-port boost controller on it. Uh, why can't we just have that, guys? Why? Because we would run any wastegate we want at that point. We wouldn't have to deal with other types of wastegate control. Um, we could even at that point, if, if we were able to just shut down the electronic actuator, uh, be able to run uh, an external electronic boost controller. Uh, they're not horribly expensive, but then it gives us the opportunity to run whatever turbo we want. You know, not needing an internal wastegate necessarily. Um, 
you know, uh, the thing is though, is that there's, you're still would need to raise certain values in the computer doing so, like the air charge and the boost pressure limit, because then the ECU, the stock ECU, closes the throttle plate to prevent you from exceeding that. Um, so, I mean, maybe, I don't know if it can be done, maybe you can eliminate the stock wastegate actuator. I would think though, that if that was possible, that would have been done already, because uh, I know you do it in low tech, you cannot do it at this point, software wise, you can't do it factory ECU. I do know that, uh, I believe it was, no comments, USR, that had an, a regular, regular actuator on there. And what they did was to trick the computer was they used some sort of uh, spring pressure loaded uh, mechanism to fool the ECU into thinking it was accurate. Now, I'm not sure how all that worked and what they did, because they sure as hell didn't want to tell me. <laughs> and I just, you know, uh, it is what it is, you know. And, and to me, that avenue is not worth the trouble because I have other things that are more viable for people. Uh, so um, if somebody wants to invest, okay, guys, if you guys want to invest on what can be tried and can't be tried, Fine, I have no problem working with you guys. Um, and, and just give it a shot and see what works, what doesn't. It's the same thing with the uh, 2000cc injector from Extreme DI. Could they possibly work? Maybe. Um, doing something like lowering the pressure, uh, the pressure at a certain point, then keeping the injector duty cycle up to a certain millisecond value. Oh, it's very possible that they could function 100% normal. Um, you know, and, and for as far as what the 1650cc injectors, nobody ever really uh, clarified what the drivability issues were. All I've ever found, no matter how many people have plucked, picked their ass, it was it's a drivability issue. And I can only kind of guess or assume that it has to do with uh, the, the curve below a certain amount of millisecond rating, uh, where it becomes... Uh, very uneven and, and starts to want to misbehave. I wouldn't think that it would be an issue at wide open throttle. I think it would really just be an issue at part throttle with something like that. And again, this is where we're still going back to software, guys. Software, software, software. So at the end of the day, what could the OEM ECU not do compared to MoTeC? Let's, let's just try to simplify that. All right, MoTeC, faster read rate, all software access, yes, but besides software, um, more ports to add more things to the computer, uh, port injector drivers, and I don't know, guys, outside of that, what's really different? Um, yes, uh, it's a higher grade ECU, but at the end of the day, what are you really paying for? Well, what are you paying for is that software, man. Besides the injector drivers, you're paying for that really damn good software that you know is going to function. That's what you're paying for. So unless Honda starts charging more for software in some way or software access, how can we get more out of this ECU that we have, which I honestly feel can do way more than it does. Um, just simply because I've tuned Focus RSs. I happen to be a EFI certified EcoBoost. And you can do a whole lot more on a Focus RS. Um, there's way more accessible tables. Uh, you can do a whole lot more on that than you can on a Type R. And it is the same ECU. Granted, there are some software differences, but the physical ECU can do so much more, guys. And I mean so much more. Um, just to give you an idea, one of the complexities of a Focus RS on the Bosch Med 17 is the fact that it has ooh, about, I believe in total, about almost 60 ignition tables. Now, these tables are based upon a certain amount of cam timing now versus ignition. Now, in the Type R, we only have eight, eight ignition tables, and that depends on the cam timing being positive or negative. Well... The reason that the Focus RS has so many ignition timing tables is that at 
10 degrees on intake cam and eight degrees negative on exhaust cam, this is the table they use. So those tables are constantly changing. That's 60 ignition tables being run at any given point can be on one of those tables. That's how fast the Bosch Med 17 ECU is. 60 ignition tables. And it works flawlessly on that car. So you can't tell me that the stock ECU doesn't have some serious capability, guys. I mean, the stock ECU, you don't see guys you well over, I mean, you can easily go over 550, 600 wheel on the Focus RS. There's the injectors and the extreme DI pump that can go on it or, you know, or, or D Twerk 1700 CCs. Guys, it, it's, they have no issues running the OEM ECU. They don't have to do Cybex to do all that. And it's the same computer. <laughs> so, uh, and they run a three port boost controller, man. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, Honda, please. Please give us the ability to run a like a three port four port boost controller. Please, god damn it, man! Let's stop being stuck to like internally gated only turbos. Which really, at this point, anything bigger than uh, anything bigger than six hundred, but anything bigger than six hundred horsepower is has to be a Garrett. Uh, you're stuck to a Garrett because we're V band in, V band out with the internal wastegate. Uh, anything else won't really fit the zone of rotor, the gates, the wastegates on the front, you know, and, and precision drop in turbos that you'd have to have a run of wacky Subaru exhaust to get over 600. And it's, it's crazy. Like, man, think about it. How many really good extra setups would we see? Okay. If we could just use a four port boost controller, how about any really good setups could we see if we just had the ability to actually adjust the injector settings that we need to adjust you guys got to push honda at it for this stuff they're not going to just do it out of nowhere people have to want this man they have to want this i get it the electronic wastegate's really cool it does great at controlling boost but guess what focus rs the other way it controls boost throttle plate guys it does and it does it seamlessly and whether you guys want to know this or not the efr 7163 below 24 pounds. And those of you who do have had it or not, right? It will control boost via throttle plate. And I have seen a lot. It's flat, guys. It's a flat boost control boost curve, all right? Granted, it's a little bit more accurate to control it on the wastegate, but the boost curve is still flat, even though the wastegate's wide open and the turbo wants to run off. The ECU can still limit via throttle plate. So those are all things that, you know, guys that we, we have to push for it. We have to ask, hey, get on that. Hey, man, we want this. We want this. So, so I'm not against guys go to MoTeC, man. If you guys got some money, good for you. But my money has literally been reinvested into parts for the people. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, if there's something I missed on MoTeC or something I said wrong, sorry, man, I'm not perfect. I'm tired. I've been really busy and I've got some family members who are very ill. So, um, and my focus has really just been trying to keep from my head exploding. So thank you guys again. Uh, remember to like, subscribe. If you don't like it, okay, whatever. Just don't be obnoxious, you know, and, uh, hit me up www.fkatv.com. Hit contact. That's the easiest way to guarantee getting email to me. Cause a lot of people are saying, oh, I didn't send get your email. Well, a lot of people are misspelling it. So just go to my webpage and hit contact from there. I have never not received an email for those of you who have contacted me through there. Thank you so much. And uh, let me know what you guys want to see in the next video. Uh, I'm sure I'll have something assembling this as soon as my bearings come in. Because literally it's one of waiting for bearings. Good night everybody. And y'all have a great rest of your day.